to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. Let me ask you this. Not only that, not just are you happy to be in the house of the Lord today, but how excited are you to be in the faith God fellowship in Russellville? Amen. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's right. Faith in God fellowship is living and alive because we have a foundation that's built on Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And, and at this church, we don't deal with wood, hay, and stubble, praise God. We deal with gold, silver, and precious stones as our building materials at this church. Amen? Amen. 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 That is some exciting stuff. i tell you what, uh, the title of my sermon today is What Was I Saying? Uh, the power of our confession is, you know, last week it was uh, What Was I Thinking? Amen. Yeah, yeah, what was I thinking? I, I thought a lot about that one. But I tell you what, I want to get everybody up this morning. Uh, if you can, if you want to sit and worship today, that's, that, that's fine. Uh, but we got a mover and a shaker here this morning. And uh, I'm, I'm ready to get my praise and worship on. I'll tell you what, I don't know what it is, something in the atmosphere. I've been playing bass guitar at Revival the last three nights down at Mount Holly. You guys are in Amelia uh, this next week, every night at 7. They're doing revival up there, praise God. So these last three nights I've been up there praying revival and letting God move in my heart and begin to stir something. And what was interesting, it was kind of like, it felt like the first couple of nights we were swimming upstream, you know? Just, just a heaviness, like a resistance that was there. Uh, have you guys have you experienced anything like that here? Feel like we've, we've, we've come against some resistance and things? Well, let me tell you, last night it was different. It was like something had broken through. The atmosphere, the spirit was different. And I'm beginning to feel that here at the Faith in God Fellowship, a different atmosphere. Uh, not, not this, well, you know, we're just getting by and, you know, well, yeah, we're still standing on our ground. Sister Beverly, we've gone from standing our ground to gaining our ground. Amen. In Jesus' name, that's right. Praise God. Praise God. I tell you what, I made a post this week. I, I, I tell you how I feel. I feel like Lazarus when Jesus called his name and said, Come forth. Amen. I feel like I'm stepping out of something. I feel like, you know, even though I might still be bound in those grave clothes, I'm alive, I'm breathing, and I know that they're getting ready to unwrap me and let me come back to life again. Amen. And I believe that the way God has shown me that is a spiritual representation of the faith in God fellowship. Amen. What we thought was dead and was in the grave, God has called us forth by name. Faith in God fellowship. Come forth in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Yes. So I tell you, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. All right. There we go. We're going through the sound system. All right. Well, if y'all want, you can grab a seat for a minute. Praise God. Take, take a rest there. Amen. Let's hit some uh, let's hit some quick announcements here. And again, welcome to the Faith in God Fellowship. Looks like uh, we might have stirred a little something up inside of you today. Amen. 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 All right, we started something up in Pam this morning. Praise God. Amen. Let, here, let's see if we can't stir this up for you. My wife brought in a crock pot of something that's just a big, red, cheesy, noodly, meaty mess of something that, that, that praise God, we're going to get spiritually fed this morning, and we're going to go get fat and happy. Well, a little fatter and a little happier, <laughs> amen, than what we already are. Praise God. Amen. So let's give God a hand clap for providing a meal for us and some fellowship today, amen. All right, real quick, uh, one of my favorite things going on here uh, right now outside of Sunday service is Mondays at 6.30 p.m. and Appeal to Heaven group. Uh, we're going to be going uh, like what I call some promo spots for this coming up. That's what I was talking about, work. Uh, work for me, fun for you. Uh, we're going to get some videos, a little short, little snippet interviews with people in the group to kind of tell you what it's about. And uh, we'll get some promo stuff out there so people can get a little bit more uh, about what this is, the effect that it's having on our government, on, on ourselves, in our community. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more because uh, I'm actually going to mention this in the sermon. So that's Mondays at 6.30 p.m. Beverly Colstead heads that up for us. Okay, on, uh, on Saturday, September 25th, 
We got our fundraiser coming up. Praise God. That's going to be uh, forgiven. It's going to be in a house, an amazing Southern uh, uh, gospel group, along with uh, Blake Lovell and his group called Calvary's Grace. I think they're Georgetown local. So they're going to be here. A lot of good music, a lot of good praise. Spaghetti dinner that evening as well. I see some smiles on some faces there. Amen. Who doesn't like spaghetti? We're going to have meatballs and all that good stuff. In it. We're not bringing that, that cheap watered down stuff. Amen. We're going to feed you all really good. All right. Before I run out of breath here this morning, August the 27th, community meal. That's going to be the fifth Sunday of every month. Uh, the Brilliant Minds of Faith and God Fellowship got together and said that's what we'll do on the fifth Sunday of every month. Oh, I'm so, is it the 29th? I got the wrong date. Thank you for, for correcting me on that. I guess I hit the wrong button. Anyway, it would be the 29th. Uh, but anyway, it would be the fifth Sunday of each month. And that's what we're going to do, hopefully, uh, you know, for at least the next year. We'll see how that goes that every month that has a fifth Sunday. We're going to have a nice meal and fellowship. And uh, not only for the people in the church, but we'll put something on the sign at the community, you know, wants to stop in and, and have a bite with us and get to know us. That would be fine as well. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, that's all my announcements that I had. Is there anything else? That, did I miss anything? Did anybody need to, to add anything else on there at this time? No? Yes, no? Connie said, no, shut up, Scott. I'm ready to pray in the worship. So, <laughs> oh, amen. Praise God. All right, you guys. Amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. Before I preach this word today, I just want to do a live song for you guys. Let me get into this. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We want to magnify your name and glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus. When
and give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. 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 All right, for the reading of the word today, our, uh, our main text is going to be out of Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 through 30. Amen. It says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token, excuse me, of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here to be in me. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you would take the cold and cleanse my lips today, Father God, that you would set a guard at the door of my mouth, that you would help me deliver this message with clarity, Lord. Hey, Bob, can you do me a favor to turn uh, turn the main volume on the board down just, just a hair, please? I don't want to blow anybody out here. Father, just bless this message today. Give us ears to hear, eyes to see, in Jesus' name, and a heart that's ready to receive, Lord God, that we would change our conversation, that we would realize today that the power of life and death are in our tongues, Father God, and we need to fix what has been coming out of our face, Father. And we ask that you would just lovingly correct us today, encourage us today, and let us walk away after this message, Lord, with a renewed mind, a renewed heart, in a renewed spirit, Father God, with joy. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Apostle Paul uh, said there are many voices in this world and none are without significance. Amen. And today we're seeing that even uh, from, from the living room uh, to the gas pump, uh, to every aspect of our life now, uh, we have voices constantly coming at us. When is the last time any of us had a moment of silence? No media, no music, nothing pumping at us. Get in the car, no radio, just, just nothing. It, it's probably been a while since, since, since we have not uh, had our full diet of the many voices that are in this world. Now, unfortunately, most of those voices are not the gospel of Jesus Christ anymore. Most of those voices no longer carry a positive and an encouraging message, nor do they talk about sin, hell, or repentance. Amen. We don't bring those types of things up anymore. And uh, we don't understand that the power of life and death are in our tongue. There are many areas of our life that are being affected by our conversation or by our lack thereof. When Paul said... Let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love the way that the King James writers wrote that. If you look at a newer version, it might say, let your manner of lifestyle be that of Jesus Christ. But he said conversation in the King James Bible. I believe that for a reason. It's not just our manner of life, but our manner of life should be a reflection of, of what we're saying and what we're doing should, should be lined up. Amen? And we got a big problem today in this world, especially we see it in the politicians. They'll say one thing, and does their walk line up with their talk? Absolutely not. They are liars to, to the deepest of all degrees. And we take it hook, line, and sinker every time. That snake bites us, we, pay, we throw it down, and the snake says, pick me up again. I won't bite you this time. And what do we do? We pick that sucker up again, bites us again, Snake says, well, I'm a snake. What did you expect me to do? Amen. We think we weren't going to get bit. So who we're listening to is very important. But I want to get to another thing of what we are saying and what we are confessing out of our mouths. Have it affected us. It's affected our finances. It's affected our children. We are losing our children because of our conversation or our lack thereof. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. I'm guilty of this as well. Praise God that, that five years ago, the Lord knocked me off my spiritual high horse and gave me a wake-up call and became diligent, a lot more diligent, in my home to preach and teach the Word of God to my children without compromise and to change the conversation that I was having with them. Amen? I want to go to Psalms right now, 141.3. He said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. I used to be a foul-mouthed, disgusting, filthy-talking sinner of a human being. It was always desperation, bad situation, threats against people, just the standard miserable stuff. And I want to tell you, who this has had the greatest impact on in my life, not me, but my kids, my children. Because of my conversation, I have a 23-year-old son. He's a good son. He honors his parents. We need help. He comes and helps. He's very generous, very loving and kind. But he does not have Jesus Christ in his life. If he were to die today, I would be a very heartbroken parent because I would know where my son would be and it would not be in the kingdom of heaven. See, that's the reality of it. Just because my son at one point said a sinner's prayer doesn't make him saved. His walk does not, did not line up with that confession. He confessed Jesus, but he's walking a different direction. Amen? And I don't think that just applies to, ch to my children. I think all of us have had something like that go on. Amen. But God has dealt with me and with my conversation. And I want to read this. I want to show you how important this is to God. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed. But they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. If I have not been diligent, as we had talked in the last couple sermons, last week we went to God's holy law where it says in Deuteronomy, it says that you'll teach these things diligently unto your children. Amen? Is that not what God's word said last week? Amen? Amen. Just making sure everybody's still alive and breathing out there. Praise God. What well, says here that happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemy in the gate. Our children are finding themselves ashamed, unvictorious, beat down, depressed, and we can't deal with other people in the world. And they're always in their cell phone like this, completely shut off from other people. Amen. Amen. They're not speaking with the enemy in the gate, are they? They're not going out to the enemy and taking ground and saying, not today, Satan. Jesus lives in my heart. How many young people do we hear saying that today? No, they don't want conflict. They just hide and get in the cell phone, slink off into a corner somewhere or whatever. They're not going out and taking charge and speaking with the enemy in the gate because we as parents, myself as a parent, did not instill that in my children because I gave up at some point. I quit fighting. I let my conversation go back to the world. I got caught up in the news. I got caught up in the world and everything else. I quit talking about Jesus. I started worrying about how much money I had. I wasn't going to get this bill made. What are my kids doing here? Oh, I don't like that person. I don't like this situation. Just an ungodly a conversation that was not a faith. And my children have suffered my daughter McKenna should be up here every Sunday singing a song. But you're afraid, right? And I would guarantee that's because of things that you've heard me say or seen me do that you don't want to get up here because you're afraid of some things. I should have had a better conversation with you as a child and your faith and encouraging you and telling you what God could do in your life and in bringing out those talents but instead I was too worried about that and what I had to go do because I spent too many years as a drug addict. Amen? 
but God is changing my conversation today. I'm able to have conversations with my children now, praise God, and with my son who is unsaved. Maybe this is encouragement to any parent out there that has a child that has, has walked away from the Lord or not walking with God. Amen. Every time you see your child, share the gospel with them. Jesus loves you. The things that you're doing is either abomination or sin that will send you to hell. I'm telling you that because I'm your parent and I love you. End of the conversation. Let's move on to the next thing. Every time a child shows up at our house that doesn't live with us anymore, we have an opportunity to plant a seed. Because all the years that we were planting the wrong kind of seeds with the wrong kind of conversation, don't you think that God can't turn that around? If we start changing the type of seeds, if we change the crop that we're putting in the ground, okay? If we want corn, we better stop planting beans, amen, and hoping on a corn harvest. Praise God. What did we see in that video today? The sound of dry bones rattling. Amen. Something coming alive, something new. Do you know why this church is coming alive and we've got some momentum? Because the conversation has changed from the pulpit. This is a different conversation than what you've got for the last several years up here, ain't it? And I'm not saying that to knock anybody, but praise God, we've got some life. We've got a different confession going on in here. That life is coming back to this place. That Jesus is moving in this place. That he has a plan and a purpose in Russellville and the outlying areas for faith in God fellowship. Amen? Amen. That, that's a great amen point right there. Amen? God is going to use the people, the gifts, the talents, and the things that are in this church to reach the community. But only if we have the right conversation. Amen. We don't want to be talking about how all the churches are dying. Well, they just don't want Jesus anymore and they don't want that. Man, the heck with that. Hey, God, show me where the people that do want Jesus are. Amen. Show me the right things to do, Father God, not the wrong things. Change my conversation to one of faith. That I speak things that be not as though they were. Is this church house full today? No, but it will be. Let me ask you this. Does it look a lot fuller now than it did uh, two months ago for you all? Amen. It's looking pretty good to me. Praise God. That's just the beginning because God is getting us stabilized, but he is also getting our conversation in order. He does not want us to have the same pattern and repetition that, that we've had all these years. Amen. He wants us to go back and do it differently. He wants us to have our conversation literally become the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to be speaking the word of God 24-7. Amen? Let me see. Uh, and, and especially where our children are concerned. And see, I had to learn this. My daughter McKenna taught me an important lesson. Because part of the reason my eldest son, their older brother, is not with the Lord is because, again, my conversation was very different at that point in time. And I didn't know how to talk to my children. Did I, McKenna? Did I, McKenna? Blow you away? No. It was very hard on you, wasn't it? And guess what scripture my children brought to me? My kids brought this to me. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Amen. I used to try to, and I still do sometimes, uh, you're going to lay down the ball my house and it's going to be this way and no other way you know i kind of kind of pull the moses the line in the sand you know well there, there, there's some things that are not necessarily that line in the sand moment okay when it's not you know matters regarding salvation and things like that uh, <laughs> my kids are stubborn i'm just as stubborn as they are if you want to know what my wife's personality is like look at my daughter's because god took her personality and literally split it to you know you got like uh if we had a third one, and if we'd had three girls, you'd have the good, the bad, and the ugly in there somewhere. But I'm telling you, you look at my two daughters and look at their two different personalities, that, that is my wife all wrapped in one. It's, it's, it's wonderful. But uh, anyway, sorry, that was a little side note. But provoke not your children to anger. We can't always just tell our kids how it's going to be or what they're going to do. Once they hit the age of accountability... You know, they're making their own decisions, off doing their own things. They want to go where they want to go, learn what they want to learn. But the Bible says, raise up a child in the way they should go with the word of the Lord. When they get older, they won't depart from it. 
We have all planted seeds in our children's life, good and bad. But God is still giving us the opportunity to keep planting. If our children will listen to us, if they'll have a phone conversation, if they'll show up at the house, even if it's just once a year, take that one opportunity to plant the gospel seed. I love you. These things in your life will send you to hell. I don't want you to go there. Jesus loves you. You know the way out. End of conversation. Let's move on to the next day. And I'll tell you, your children down the road, whether you live to see it or not, will respect you. I have an expectation that one day my son will stand in a pulpit or stand in a church somewhere and will testify, thank God for my daddy's conversation. Thank God that every time I showed up at the house, my dad cared more about my soul than he was about affinity. He would tell me every time, Scott, fornication will send you to hell, Jonathan. Amen? You got to be married to do those types of things. That's the way God wants it. That's his word. Stop drinking the alcohol and the liquor. Stop doing the crazy things. Those are not godly. Those will separate you from the Lord. <clears throat> That's a two-minute conversation. Jesus loves you, son. And you know when the time comes where to go. And that's it. And I tell my son that every time I see him, he still answers the phone every time I call him. He still calls me. He still messages me. He still gives me a hard way to go. Still tells me I'm old and crusty, you know. But he still comes every week and he hangs out with me. <laughs> Amen. I didn't think that would happen. I thought that I had driven my son off at one point by trying to shove the gospel down his throat. And the Lord taught me. Every time he comes, just, just a little tiny place, just one little seed, that's it. That's all you got to do, and God will water that. And I know some of y'all are struggling with your children, your adult children, and what they've learned in college, and the Lord had mercy to the educational system. And uh, But can I give y'all hope today? Can I give you hope for your children that if you'll change your conversation, that if you will let your conversation become the gospel of Jesus Christ, it will have an impact. Emma, I believe, little sister, that every week that you come to church, that if I take the time to talk to you, because here's what I've noticed today, and, and I'm not front you, I'm not embarrassing you right now, Emma. I'm not going to make you come up and talk. Okay. Where was Emma last week during service? Did anybody pay attention? Anybody remember? Emma was curled up on a chair in the back, the whole time for music, for the service, for the word, and everything. What's different this week, Emma? Why are you sitting, why are you sitting up here with us this week? Because mom, because mom told you to. What did mom say to you? Was she mean about it, or what did she say? You can tell on her. It's okay. We won't call CPS. We won't. <laughs> what did you say to her, Pam? And did you, did, you, did you ask, did you say why? Was that the first, you didn't ask why? Okay, well, I'm going to ask for you, why? Because she believed me certainly because I was so sweet to me. Yes, sir. Hold on, but why do you ask her to come up here? Is, is it just a discipline thing? Or does maybe mama love her baby? No, I love her. Maybe you love her, hold on. Because not only that, because if she's sitting back there, she might miss out on something. She might not hear a soul-saving word from God because she was in her phone. See, mom just didn't say that because you, you, you're not in the flow or you're just doing something different or you're being a mouse. No, she said that because eternity is at stake for you. And it doesn't hit very hard at 11 or 12 years old or, or 17 or 19, whatever you two all are now. It, the, the reality of that doesn't hit home. But your eternity is at stake. And that's why mom didn't know why you asked her to come up here, Pam. What's the real reason? Was it discipline or does mama love her baby and, she, and you know that God has something good for her? Oh, I love my baby. That's right. No matter how old she gets. That's right. That's right. And it's the same love we all have for all of our children. And our kids should be out speaking with the enemy and the gate being bold. But Ken ought to be running in here on Sunday. Get out of the way, Dad. I got a song to do. You're singing next week. I'm taking the slot this week.
And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved to the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone. Because why was he undone? Because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Amen. That was Isaiah. When the Lord called to him, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. He knew that his conversation had been wrong. He was in the midst of the people that God was calling out Isaiah as a prophet to go and, 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 and rebuke and reprove and correct his people. But even Isaiah knew he knew his place. He didn't jump up and say, ooh, ooh, God called me to be the pastor. I'm going to go tell them all what's going on now. It's the first thing he did. Our conversation ain't right. God's called me to go tell people what I've seen. I've seen the face of a holy, holy, holy God. That's what it just said in Scripture, that they cry out holy. And then God's going to take someone like me that used to cuss like a filthy sailor. To go speak his holy word. Our conversation has to be the gospel. Our conversation has to be holy and upright. Amen. Not just before the world, but especially before our children. Because let me tell you, you already, you've heard it saying kids are a reflection of the parent, right? Amen. Kids are going to carry the conversation of the parents. That's not just what we talk and say, but the conversation. In, in what we do. And some of us might say, well, my kids are involved in some things that I've never done. But the conversation at the time was not planning and working and moving. It was not the gospel of Jesus Christ 24-7. It was a lot of other stuff. It was us trying to figure it out on our own. Us trying to get it done in our own power. Look, we're no different than Abraham. What did Abraham do when God promised him a son? Did he wait faithfully on the promise? Here it comes, Sarah. Just wait this time next year. No, nope, go see Hagar. And what kind of mess did that create with Ishmael and the nation of Islam? Amen. Created a mess. Do you think we're any different than Abraham? Has anybody in here not created a mess with at least one of their kids? Okay, praise God. I don't see any hands going up. Amen. That's, that's encouraging for me. Because Abraham did the same thing. And what could he do? He had to trust in God. But see, Abraham put action to his faith at that point too. Bob and I were kind of having a conversation about that. You know, we're not just going to stop and, and just pray about stuff. We're going to change our conversation. Amen. We're going to do things like our men's study. Amen. We're going to get deep in the word of God. We're going to see what that gospel has to say about, about the things that we were talking about. Amen. About biblical manhood and stuff like that. Because I want my conversation to change. I have a grandson coming next month. And I had a conversation with my son this morning at about 7 a.m. I said, I would like your permission to preach to my grandson. Because that's his child. I'm going to ask his permission. Show my son the same respect he shows me. Amen. And he kind of got real quiet on the phone because I said, hey, look, son, I said, I missed it with you. I ain't going to mess it with him. Amen. I said, that's why God gives us grandkids because all the stuff we screwed up with you, we get a second shot here. And then we get to spoil the rock, too, and make them think we're the greatest things and you guys are the worst. So anyway, but anyway, so I, I look forward to that privilege. But God is moving on me that my grandchild, because of where my son is at, if I don't give him that conversation of the gospel, he'll never get it from his daddy during that part of his life, during his most formidable years. But I know that God has a plan for my son because the Bible says, Serve, what must I do to be saved? He said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved, you and your house. Amen. I'm believing for my son. He's part of my house. Praise God. Even though he's out on his own, he's still not married yet. Still part of my house. Amen. He is not cleaved unto a wife. So I'm believing for his salvation. Amen. And I'm believing that my conversation, my wife's conversation, my daughter's conversation will pour into the life of my grandchild. And where his daddy is not giving him the right kind of conversation, we will. 
okay? Because there's many voices in this world, none are without significance. And if we're not speaking a little bit louder, you know, you guys, I don't know if y'all like them shouting preachers or not, but sometimes I love them guys because I'm, I'm deaf, I'm, I'm stiff neck. And sometimes we, we, we have trouble hearing, amen? You know, I don't want my kids hearing that mess of the world. If, if I got to shout a little louder to get Jesus over top of the TV and what that trash is coming, I got to get a little louder for y'all to hear. That's what I'm going to do. My conversation, I want my grandchild to hear my conversation that I have in the Word of God now that I didn't have with my kids. So God and His grace and His mercy, rather than just cut us off completely, amen, still gives us second chances with our family, with our kids, with our children, with our grandchildren. You never know. It might be what you say to your grandchild that when you're long gone off of this earth, that that 20-year-old grandchild of yours, once when they grow up, they go to their mom and dad and they quote the word of God that you gave them as a child and it'd be them that causes the parents to be convicted and convinced of their sin. Amen. And that, well, wait a second, maybe, maybe mom and dad didn't miss it. Maybe they were telling me the truth of the word. Because the Bible says out of the mouths of babes. I tell you what, I have never been more convicted. There has never been a preacher from behind a pulpit ever convinced me of my sin more than one of my children looking at me. Dad, where's the money at? Where's the rent money? Why is mom over there crying? Dad, why is our water turned off, Dad? we got to have a much different conversation. Amen? Amen. And my conversation is going to be about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus for my kids from now on and to everybody that I meet, praise God. Because, see, I've got a God that's in the healing and the restoration business. Amen? See, my conversation used to be, man, I don't get what I want at home. I'll go find it someplace else. I don't get what I need. I'm miserable. I'm unhappy. Do you know what my conversation is today? Praise God, I have a faithful family, a faithful wife, I'm a faithful husband, amen. God has brought newness into my life. I've seen him restore a marriage that, that should have been destroyed time and time again. I saw God restore relationships between me and my children because I had provoked them to anger to the point they didn't want anything to do with me in my, in my self-righteous religious self. And God had to break that spirit of religion on me, praise God, he did. And I have learned something. By humbling myself and changing my conversation and saying, God, I was wrong. Forgive me. Change what I'm saying. Will you give me a second chance with my children, with my grandchildren, to speak something into their lives? Lord God, and when I'm not around them, don't let my conversation be, well, they'll never get it. Well, it's just been this well time. No, God, you do the impossible. Lord, just like Lazarus, when you called him out of the grave, you can do that for my children. Amen? Amen? Amen. Is there anything impossible for God? Is his arm too short that it cannot save? Amen? Lois, have you seen this? Did they tell you that your husband was beyond help? Yeah, I see your head going up. Yes, they did. How many times have you told me you're beyond help? You need Jesus. <laughs> you need Jesus. Amen. Our conversation. If it's not Jesus, we're going to get caught, caught up with everybody else. We're going to be in a, in a redundant, hopeless conversation, just like politics. This is why I love Sister, uh, Sister Beverly's group. Amen. Is because it's not a place where we come and just sit and complain about what's going on on, on Capitol Hill and in our government and the policies and all that. No. There is a godly biblical discussion of what's out there and then the very next thing that we do after that, man, Sister Beverly, and them, they get some music going, we get some praise and worship, and, and we, we enter into the battle. We start praying over these things. We start speaking the word of God over these things because she brought up the word. God commands us to pray for those that are in authority. Amen? To get involved. But this, this group that's an appeal to heaven is showing us how to have a godly conversation into the political field instead of the same old, hey, oh my God, just Lord, just shut that TV off. I can't take it anymore. I have actually found solace in this group on Mondays. 
Because I have found a way now that I don't have to be frustrated about this crap that's going on anymore. I have found a way to start battling spiritually and knowing that I'm gaining ground, that God is moving. And we are not the only ones. Amen. And that's why I want to get behind this thing of 100% this appeal to heaven to get other people that feel hopeless like I did in a redundant political conversation. It's just the same thing. Both sides are dirty. It'll never change. Is that what the Word of God says? No. We can change things, can't we, Sister Beverly? Amen. That's right. Through prayer, through reading of the Word of God, by coming in here and being faithful every single week. Maybe it's because you have spent the last two years with a group faithfully playing praying that we have a man like Blystone running for governor now. Maybe it was those prayers and those things that helped move this man into this position because never before at a time in our country do we have an opportunity to put people in the office out of grassroots movements. We are at a point in our country where the very first time we could see somebody put in a real position of power that is not a Democrat or a Republican. Amen? Hey, come on. That's powerful stuff. We, we can see some change. We can cry out to God for some mercy in this thing. Amen? And, and see some change, not only on our political side, but the reason why I'm saying that is, is, is the prayer, but there's action, there's discussion. The same thing applies to our children and in our lives. Man, if we get a godly discussion going on, we get in that word of God, we start going to Bible studies, man, we're going to hit this thing heavy. In these men's groups. And these things like I've been seeing in the appeal to heaven, we're going to bring some of those things over into our men's group, man, as far as how we worship and how we pray. We go to battle for our families, for our children, for our grandchildren, for our communities. Amen? Instead of just sitting back and saying, well, there's nothing I can do. They're just caught up in it now. No, that's wrong. Even though it seems like a giant, what does God do to giants with, with little big boys? Amen? He takes it down in Jesus' name. We're going to see some giants fall in this place. Look, I want you all to be encouraged. Brother Bob, I want you to be encouraged. You're going to see God move. You're going to see him move in your conversation. You're going to see him move in your children and your family, brother. I truly believe that because there has never been a time that I have seen God's word go out and come back void. It's never done it. It can't do it. And his word says it does not go out and return unto him void, but it accomplishes that thing which he has sent out to do. Just sometimes we got to hold on and our conversation needs to be one of faith. Not like the children of Israel, okay? Because I could just be like, well, Lord, I prayed for my son. It seemed like he was doing good there for a minute. But there he is doing that thing. And Lord, I guess you just, oh, well, it is what it is. God ought to kick me in my butt. I ever say some stupid stuff like that. Amen. I'd be praying over my son. Hey, Lord, he backslid a little bit, God. But you know what? You're married to the backslider. That's what I saw in your word, that you'll call the backslider out of that, just like that prodigal son, Lord. You'll call him out of that hall and, and bring him back and clean him up and give him that robe of righteousness in Jesus' name. Amen? That's the type of conversation and things that I speak about my son now. I don't speak hopeless things. I speak from the word of God over my family, over my children. And since I have been doing that, I have seen spiritual movement in my family. Three months ago, my wife was not going to have anything to do with a pastorship when all this first came up. It's too much. Who prophesied that over you? Where did that come from? Because I certainly was not looking. And the enemy was at it. He was tearing us apart. My conversation had to change because it was no longer, Lois, you just, it, it's, it's what I've done. You're going to be alongside me, and that's just the way it is. How, how, how did that work out for me? Not good. <laughs> Not good. It was ugly. I had to pray. I had to back off. And guess what? In that situation, God said, shut up. The conversation that I had to have at that point was not between me and her. Between me and God. Because there were some things he had to make right in me first. Before he started dealing with them. Because if the head is sick, the body's sick. Amen. So again, as the head of our families, we have to change our conversation. It has to become the gospel of Jesus Christ. I, I tell you what, when I was a young man, when I was in prison, and I was learning the word of God and reading and memorizing, I mean, I was so into it, uh, the group of guys that I was with, I would challenge them to make our conversation the gospel. And in any situation, uh, any circumstance, any conversation that we're having, pull something from the word of God to apply to it. And, and, and that's what we got to. And that was many, many years ago. And of course, when I got out, I, I fell away. I forgot those things. But because God had that conversation with me, 
as a young man all those years ago. When I got older, what happened? I've turned back. I have not departed from it now. Amen. So these things in these conversations that you've had with your children, you have planted seeds in their lot that will come to manifest, but we got to go behind it and water it at some point. And sometimes we have to have those bold conversations with our children. Hey, I need two minutes of your time. Open the word of God. Here's what the Bible says about this, this, and this. Doesn't change my love for you. I'm your parent. I'm always there for you. And that's why I'm showing you. This is what's going to send you to hell. You have an opportunity to repent. Now let's go eat dinner. It's that simple. Our kids love us. They're going to listen to us. We only have to say it to them one time and it's going to stick. We're going to have to keep. Because then, we, then we're provoking them. Because then we're trying to, to get a reaction and, and something and, or make that plan manifest in our timing and not God's timing. Again, when we plant, we got to water and we have to wait. We have to wait on God to give that increase. Amen. All right. Let's see if we can get the rest of this message out of here. All right. Praise God. James 1, 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. Have you ever heard anybody say they were a Christian? And then you've been, you, you knew the minute you heard him talking, he ain't saved. <laughs> I've heard people talk about God and the string of obscenities that have come out their mouth behind it. Just, just, just like you just know. But you know the religion's in vain. Amen. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boast great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. Amen. Our, our words can, can build up or they can destroy. We can burn a child up by the things that we say to them. Amen. And, and how we say to it. So that's why I say before we say stuff to our kids, we're going to come out of the Word of God, pray first, ask God to give you wisdom in it, and ask Him for the right timing to drop that one word in, to sneak it in, because sometimes you got to sneak it in on them, like right in the middle of a conversation. Oh, did you know the Bible says this real quick? And it slip it in and be done. And then, wait, what? Huh? What? It, it, and you caught it in the midst of and said, you don't even have time to stop and think about it, but you planted it, and you get to keep right on moving. Amen? James 3, 6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. If our conversation is not the gospel of Jesus Christ, this is what we're doing. If we ain't talking Jesus, we're setting something on fire, people. Amen? That's, that's what I'm getting out of that. Always setting something on fire where I found out sometimes it's best just to keep my mouth shut. You know, I can't tell you how many how many bridges I've burned and everything else. It's just about just, if I'd have just shut up, I'd have been okay. Amen? Isaiah 45, uh, 23. I have sworn by myself, the word has gone out of my mouth, the righteousness, and shall not return. I want you to hear this about conversation. That unto me, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall swear. There is going to be a confession on the day of judgment that everybody will have to confess. You'd be better off to get a chance to confess it now, willingly, then when this comes, when Jesus shows up on the great and terrible day of the Lord, he said that every that shall return unto me, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. And here we go. This is out of uh, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord to the glory of God. Amen. So God is going to bring us to a final conversation of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Do you see that? On the day of judgment, every knee will bow. Everything in heaven and earth, under the earth, will drop to that knee and will confess. See that word? Confession. A conversation. They're going to confess Jesus Christ is Lord. God wants us to have that confession now. Why do we want to wait to the day of judgment to do that? Because see, there's going to be people, those of us on the good side of eternity, we're going to be rejoicing when we get to bow because when I bow down, whatever crown God has given me, I'm done just like you, Paul. I'm done that thing at his feet to worship. The others that reject Jesus, they're not going to have a choice. They're not going to have a choice. 
Amen? Every knee shall bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Our conversation has to be the gospel now. We need to be confessing Jesus now every chance we get to our children, to our co-workers, to, to our community. Amen? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Our conversation has got to change. And I know it's hard in this day and time because anytime anybody goes to say anything, you got a whole group of people want to attack you. Can't even say, can't even say, uh, like, it, it, it is just ridiculous. I posted on Facebook a couple weeks ago, hey, we're having service at, at, at 10 a.m. at Faith in God Fellowship. And I don't know who it was on my friend's list. Oh, well, I've got a church. And who cares? Well, I'm going to pray for your pastor. <laughs> you know, so I'm going to be praying for your pastor, whatever church you go to. But, but that's the type of ridiculous stuff. You know, you can't say anything in this world. Out. So, so why not, if we're going to get beat up for something, why not let it be for the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen? The Bible says we're going to suffer for the Lord. I'd rather suffer for Jesus than the world because you're going to get beat up for your conversation no matter what you do. No matter what side you choose, you're going to get beat up. Amen? I want to be found on the side of the Lord. I want my conversation to be Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because if I get caught up in the wrong conversation, I'm going to lead somebody down the wrong path. And then their blood is on my hands. I don't, I don't want that type of accountability brought up to me. Amen. But I want to give you hope today for your children, for your families, and for the next generation. God promises that he'll have a remnant. Amen. God is faithful to his word. So if we're willing to change our conversation, stop listening to the world, and we start speaking this gospel, we start doing things like getting our Bible studies together, our men's groups and our women's groups, and we get into the Word of God, and we let our conversation become the gospel, things are going to start changing. We're going to see this church house fill up, number one, because Jesus is being lifted up. You can't get around John 12, 32, and I, and I if I be lifted up, shall draw all men unto me. That's, that's the growth formula right there. So that's what we have to start doing now is lifting up Jesus, and the way we do that is in our conversation. So we're going to see that come to pass. I want you all to be focused on that when we get to our next Wednesday night meeting of what can the women be doing. We've already been discussing about what the men can be doing, uh, when we're going to meet, the things that we're going to talk about so that we begin to change our conversation. And as our conversation, what you begin to speak, then what you begin to think starts to change. We've been talking about, you know, what was I thinking? This week is what was I saying? Guess what next week will be? What was I doing? Doing. So we got thinking, 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 what you're thinking, what you're thinking, thoughts, speech, and action. Amen? So next week it, it, it'll be basically what, what am I doing? Okay? And that's what we'll be talking about. What am I doing? Hey, are we getting small groups together? Are we getting into the Word of God? Do we have a battle plan? Amen? Like we've been doing our battle board. Uh, what are we doing on our Monday night groups? How can we how can we exploit that and grow that? And, and how can we get our conversation from here into the community? So once we're all in one accord and we get our conversation lined up, being the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen, hope for the community, appeal to heaven, all this, we get our conversation, we're all in one accord, then guess what? We carry that conversation out into the community through our flyers, through our outreaches, uh, through things that are coming up. And this is going to be coming up over the next several weeks. I, I want to be ready by, by the 25th of next month when they come in to do the fundraiser. Man, I want us all to be in one accord, speak in one conversation, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That way everybody that comes through there is getting Jesus Christ and Him crucified. They'll, they'll feel it in their spirit. That we're all in one accord in this place. And I tell you, uh, I got great reports from our guests when they came out for my birthday and stuff. They said, Brother Scott, the people in that church, they said, Man, you can feel it walking through the door of that place. They said, Man, I felt loved. Do you know how encouraging that is to me when I invite my people out here? And they say, You got you got a good thing, brother. Don't screw this up. You got a good thing, amen. Don't mess this up. You got a good thing. You can feel it. Just, I feel it when I walked in there. Those people love you when you walk in there. I said, that's right. I said, it ain't about the building. I said, we got a great building. But I got the greatest people. Amen. I'm glad I didn't get some 
50, 100 member congregation with a 50 or 100 different crazy attitude and stuff coming at me. I came in and I got a family. I asked Pam the question. I said, in the last five years uh, in our meeting, I said, have you ever had to be restored any conflict or anything like that with anybody? She said, no. Never had any of that. That's encouraging. That tells me something about the conversation of this place that has been love. Amen? I, I, don't even, I don't even have to ask. I can tell by looking. The conversation is love because that's what they felt walking through the door. There is a conversation of love in this house. Amen? So we need to take that to the next level. We need to just throw the Holy Spirit on that thing, throw some fire on that thing, and build that love up, but also build up our knowledge of the Scripture. Amen? We're going to get into the Word of God. We're going to start praying that Word of God over our situations. King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. There has not been a prayer. I'm, gonna tell, I'm, I'm being dead serious. There has not been a prayer that I can lift it up. And I want to say in, last, in like these last three or four months that God has not answered. And I want to give a quick testimony and we're going to go to communion. I have been praying to the Lord. I'm no longer receiving the PUA money. They got me in limbo on this thing again. What more types of documentation. So I have not had any income for over eight weeks. Nothing other than, you know, here, my, my Social Security disability. And uh, in that spirit of complaining, started to come, tried to come at me and just like, well, you know. And I stopped for a minute. So hold on. When we get like the children of Israel, God didn't bring us as far as that. I said, I said, God, I need some money. I said, Lord, I, I need a job. I said, I got some bills coming up here that I can put off to the to the 15th or let me move it forward. I said, Lord, I, I need to make X amount of dollars. And I said, could you do that for me, Lord? I said, I don't want to complain. I said, if it doesn't, I said, I'm content. I said, you are my provider. And this is different for me because I'm used to, you usually jump up and down and cry and complain. I guess this ain't going to happen for me until somebody either gets sick of listening to you or feels sorry enough for you. They just throw you a bone and you go away. That's not what I did. I went to my Abba father, my daddy. Yes, I said daddy, because that's what Abba is translated to, means daddy. Amen. My father, who I respect and I love. And I said, I had this need. I prayed that in the morning. Last night, I get a call from somebody from Kingdom Warriors. He says, I need 100 shirts. <laughs> that 100 shirts is going to pay my bills. Praise God, it's coming up and, and leave me a little bit of gas money to get back and forth to church. Now, he didn't finalize the deal, but he called me and said he knew Cricket. He said, yeah, I know Cricket out there. She doesn't know this guy, but he evidently knows her. So she said, praise God, somebody from our church has made an impression on somebody. Now, he didn't say whether it was good or bad. He just said, yeah, I know Cricket is, so amen. We'll find out. I'll ask him next time he calls. But, uh, but, but praise God, but we're going to have a different conversation. Amen. We're going to start asking God for things differently than what we had in the past. We're going to take our examples from the children of Israel, the things that we've looked at these, these last few weeks in Scripture. We're going to take examples from Nehemiah and from Ezra about the spirit of the people that one stood alongside the other building, one stood alongside the other building, encouraging and protecting one another and providing and working side by side. They were all of one accord. They all had the same conversation. They all had the same vision to rebuild. So again, that's what I've been doing these last few weeks, getting us all on the same page, same conversation, same vision. And once we're all, it, 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 we're seeing it come together, aren't we? Amen? Everybody seeing it come together? Let's give God a hand clap for that. So again, at the Faith in God Fellowship, we don't do an altar call. The altar is built into the service. There should never be any service that, that, that doesn't end at this altar because that's where we do, uh, that's where we bring our prayer requests, that's where we bring ourselves, that's where we bring our sacrifices, this is where we bring our worship, uh, also our time of financial worship. And uh, which reminds me, we gotta, I gotta get a check. <laughs> so we get one in here. Um, remind me today, we'll get that done this week. Um, but we're always gonna come to this altar. And I want people out there, Facebook, land or live, whoever sees this, every service, it's here at the altar. We don't let anybody walk away undone, lost, unsaved, or not prayed for. And, and today's kind of special for me. I, I would like the opportunity, uh, as I invite everybody up, and Sister Jerry, you go ahead and start playing something. I would like to pray for each one of you as your pastor today around this altar. So I'd like you to come up now and, and, and let's gather around. Are we not having communion? 
Uh, yeah, for our time of communion as well. But what I want to do is I want to do communion and altar call. Thank you, Jerry. I apologize. Communion and altar call all together today. So I'm going to bring you up to the altar. I would like to pray for each one of you, and, uh, married couples as married couples, individuals as individuals, and then we're going to take our communion. Amen? Amen. I appreciate you all bearing with me here. Like he changes it up on us every single stinking week. And then after we take our communion, I've got one more worship song that, that we'll do on, on, the, on the way out. And then guess what? After that, that food should be good and heated up. The cheese all nice and cheesy and melted. And, uh, and since we fed our spirit, we're going to go back and, and, and have a good conversation. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and start playing, Jerry. And if she's playing, have everybody make your way up to the altar today.